Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're joining us for this online service. You know, the seasons have officially changed. It is fall, and I believe we've had our last outdoor baptism for the year. We had a first grader who was baptized last Sunday. It was a wonderful time. And a missions team from Radiant Life Church is spending this week in Baja, Mexico, building our fifth house for a family in need. We're looking forward to sharing some pictures of that house build with you next week as we make an impact in the world in the name of Jesus. Yes, that is so exciting. And I wanna to share today from Psalm 18 verses one and two. It says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I love this verse and I'm kind of hanging on to this as I've reflected on the message from last week about Jesus being enough. He is enough in my life and I can cling on to that. You know, that's such a good truth because I think many times we find ourselves wanting more mm -hmm. and yet he's already provided for our every need. Let's take a moment and pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for meeting our every need through your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. We know that you are enough for us. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we would trust in you, take comfort in you, draw strength from you, and shine your light even more brightly in this generation. Yes, and God, I pray for our church family, Lord. I pray that today they would hang on to the truth that you are their rock, you are their fortress, God, you are their strength, Lord. You are everything that they need. And I pray, Father, that you would pour out your blessings on them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take a few minutes and worship together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the 
is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave Worthy is the lamb who was slain There are countless tropes that begin with the assertion that there are two kinds of people in this world. Perhaps you've heard that it's givers and takers, or maybe it's winners and losers, or it might be those who tear you down and those who build you up. The reality is that how we finish the statement that there are two kinds of people in this world has a lot to do with our worldview and how we see ourselves fitting into this world. Novelist Tom Robbins said, there are those who believe there are two kinds of people in this world and there are those smart enough to know better. While Robert Benchley said, there are those who divide the world into two kinds of people and those who don't. C.S. Lewis said, there are those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says, all right then, have it your way. Or as Bob Dylan said, there's saved people and there's lost people. Before I was married, I probably would have said, there's people who love pizza and people who will probably never share a meal with me. <laughs> to be honest, I am such a pizza aficionado that when Pastor Ana Yancey and I were engaged, she discovered that my entire diet was based on the three P's, pizza, pop, and potato chips. In the weeks leading up to our wedding, she helped me pack up the kitchen in my last bachelor pad to find a freezer stocked with a wide assortment of frozen pizzas, a respectable variety of soft drinks in the refrigerator, and cabinets and kitchen drawers organized by brand and flavor of more than a dozen of my favorite potato chips. Of course, no kitchen is complete without dishes, utensils, appliances, coffee, and ice cream, but the three Ps were non-negotiable. And to be honest, the crown jewel of my culinary existence as a single man had to be P -I -Z -Z -A. <laughs> My undisputed favorite pizza place is definitely Moose's Tooth in Anchorage, Alaska. But Gino's East on the outside edge of Chicago will always hold a special place in my heart. And of course, a 60 mile ride to Gold Dust Pizza in Copperopolis or a trip across town to Smack Pie generally hit the spot for me. Have I ever mentioned that I was actually awarded a college scholarship for preaching a short sermon at the Assemblies of God National Fine Arts Festival? I titled the message, The Parable of the Pizza Parlors. <laughs> But that's a story for another day. The truth is, I'm usually satisfied with just about any pizza, as long as there are generous toppings. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you call it. I tend to go for supreme. Yep, supreme is always enough for me. And since Jesus Christ is enough, timely truth from the book of Colossians reminds us that Jesus is supreme. If you're hungry for more, then I want to invite you to turn to Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15, where we read, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Would you bow your head with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us over and over again through your word that you are enough for us, that you have already provided enough through your Son. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, is enough. And Lord, no matter what we need, no matter what challenges we face, and no matter what obstacles lie before us, we can count on you to continue to make a way through the power of your Holy Spirit at work in us. Lord, your power is enough. I pray today that we would remember that Jesus is supreme over everything that this world throws at us. Jesus is greater. May we shine the light of Jesus in greater ways in the days ahead. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. All that talk about pizza may not feel like fall flavors to you. Perhaps autumn makes you think of pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice, pumpkin chai lattes, or any of the dozens of dishes that pay tribute to the curvaceous squash that is synonymous with fall. And whether you fancy pumpkin or not, it's pretty impressive how many dishes this one ingredient dominates during three months of menus. I love the creativity that one seemingly simple fruit ignites. Likewise, the fact that Jesus is supreme is evident in all of creation because the word of God explains that all things have been created through him and for him. In Colossians 1, 15 and 16, we read, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Remember, the birth of Jesus is in the beginning of his story. Jesus is the Son of God, and he came from heaven to earth to enter his creation so we could know God personally. And as we get to know Jesus, we discover our identity through him and for him. John chapter 1 affirms that Jesus was present at creation, and through him all things were created since Jesus is the Son of God, and he is co-equal with the Father and Spirit. Again, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, in the beginning of verse 3, we read, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Jesus said that it is only when we know him that we know our Heavenly Father, because the Father, Son, and Spirit are the one true God. The entire universe was made through him and for him. The radiance of God's glory is evident through him and for him. We are sustained through him and for him. Jesus Christ is enough. I love the way Deuteronomy 10 verse 14 simply states, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. There is no topping that. Jesus is supreme. According to foodnetwork.com, one of the secrets to making the absolute best pizza 
is the right cheese. In fact, the website advises skipping fresh mozzarella because it contains lots of water and will cook down to a milky puddle. The Food Network Pizza Yoli say that for a glorious stretchy cheese pool that will catapult you to internet fame, part skim mozzarella, whether it's grated, sliced, or diced, is the way to go. Personally, I like to throw on a bit of blue cheese with my grated mozzarella to hold all the toppings together and form the complete package. Likewise, Jesus holds all things together because Jesus is the complete package. In Colossians 1, 17 and 18, we read, He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything He might have the supremacy. The Word of God compares the church to a body with many parts, and Jesus is the head. Just as our brains send messages to every part of our bodies, whether we're awake or asleep, we are each connected directly to Jesus as we share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Though we may seem as different as an eye and an ear, or a hand and a foot, or a nose and a hip. We are all connected with Jesus who holds all of us together and helps each of us fit for the benefit of others and the glory of God. With Jesus, we get to be part of the complete package, to shine His light and share His love in this world. This is at the heart of Jesus' prayer for all believers in John 17, 20, and 21, where we read, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. You see, Jesus is supreme, yet... He values each of us. Like the cheese on a pizza, when He touches each of us, He connects us to the Father and to one another. In the children's song, The Farmer in the Dell, the farmer takes a wife, the wife takes the child, the child takes the nurse, the nurse takes the cow, the cow takes the dog, the dog takes the cat, the cat takes the mouse, the mouse takes the cheese, and the cheese stands alone. At the risk of sounding a bit cheesy myself, I find it interesting that the cheese seems to be the only character in the song whose sole purpose is to be consumed, but it still remains at the end. Don't let this go over your head, but like the cheese, when we receive Jesus, we still have plenty of Jesus to share. I'm not saying that Jesus is the cheese. I'm saying that Jesus is the complete package. Sure, He stands alone because Jesus Christ is enough. But He also stands with us, like the cornerstone in a building. In Ephesians 2, we are told that Jesus has adopted us into the household of God and lives in us by His Spirit, individually and together. In Ephesians 2, 20 through 22, we read, Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Wow! There is nothing cheesy about that. Jesus Christ is enough for us to be built together, to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. No one else could do that. Jesus is supreme. And when we come together through Jesus, we have enough to do more than just survive. We can truly thrive. Sometimes life feels like running on one of those hamster wheels. No matter how hard you try, no matter how fast your pace, it can seem like you never can get a break or maybe reach your goal. But that's not God's design. 
Through the blood of Jesus, we are the family of God, and we have peace through his blood. In Colossians 1, 19 and 20, we read, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. I don't know about you, but I want to get off the proverbial hamster wheel. I've had enough of that. No matter where we've been, or what we've done, or what's been done to us, Jesus came to reconcile all things to himself. Headaches, heartaches, belly aches, and any other kind of aches and pains are all wiped away when we receive peace through his blood that was shed on the cross for us. When we hear of royalty ascending to the throne, there is always talk about the order of succession based on birthright in royal family bloodlines. So it's interesting to note the connection between peace and the blood of Jesus. There is peace through his blood because he is the Prince of Peace. 700 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah was inspired by the Holy Spirit to list some of the titles Jesus would carry as the Son of God. And one of those titles is Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, we read, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Sounds like enough? Jesus is supreme. No one compares to him. No one can defeat him. And the only way we'll ever get off the hamster wheel is to find peace through his blood. It amazes me that people deny the evidence of God's love, grace, and mercy that are found in the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross for us. In our troubled world, Jesus gives us all that we need to find victory. Jesus is all we need. He's enough. The image of Jesus on the cross is commonly known as the crucifix. Now, in our church, we tend to show the empty cross to remind us that his work on the cross is complete. And his death was not the end. But thinking of his arms stretched out with nail-pierced hands, it's almost as Jesus was showing us how much he loves us in his most agonizing moment. And a vivid description of his sacrificial love is revealed in another prophecy found in Isaiah 53, verse 5, where we read, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Enough peace to wipe away our sins or transgressions. Enough peace to take away our shame. Enough peace to delete our deficiencies and failures. Enough peace to keep us from enduring the punishment that our sin deserves because of his great love for us. Jesus Christ is enough. He forgives our sin, heals our deepest wounds, and gives us life. That is enough. Jesus is supreme. In Colossians 1, 21 and 22, we read, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. That's enough for me. How about you? As followers of Jesus, we are not enemies of God. We are the family of God. And no matter how far we may have drifted from his will in the past, Jesus reconciles us with God through his sacrificial love. And we know that's enough because Jesus is supreme. We have life and discover our purpose through him and for him because he has proven that he is the complete package. And no matter what's happening around us, we receive peace through his blood. If you haven't experienced this peace, then perhaps it's time to take the first step 
in the right direction and begin following Jesus today. I like to say that choosing to follow Jesus is as easy as A, B, C. The letter A stands for admit that you've sinned and ask God to forgive your sin. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus already paid the price for your sin when he died on the cross. And the letter C stands for choose, and that's exactly what I'd like to invite you to do right now, to choose for yourself to follow Jesus. If you're ready to make that choice and take that first step in the right direction, then please bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this simple prayer with me. You can make it your own if you mean it. Dear Jesus, I know that you are good, and I want you to be the Lord of my life. So I admit that I have sinned, and I ask you to forgive my sin because I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross and that you conquered death when you rose from the grave. And so I choose to follow you today and tomorrow and each day throughout my life's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, for taking away my sin, and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, please send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And we are confident that because Jesus Christ is enough, the best is yet to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Surrounding me, let it break at your name. Still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still every way. At your name, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. In Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is life forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome
Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. And Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. On the first Sunday of each month, we come to the Lord's table to receive communion together. If you need a moment to gather the communion elements, you are welcome to pause this video and resume playing once you've prepared the bread and cup. If you're not able to prepare communion elements at this time, you are welcome to continue with this video and invite the Holy Spirit to draw you into communion in your heart. On the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he shared a meal with those closest to him, and taking two common elements, bread and a cup, he gave thanks. Let's bow our heads in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for providing for our every need through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We know that Jesus Christ is enough. Every need we have has been met through the sacrifice that he made for us. So I pray that as we receive this bread and this cup, that you would knit our hearts more closely together and that you would help us to walk forward in unity as we shine the light of Jesus in this generation. We pray all these things in Christ Jesus' name, amen. Taking the bread, Jesus broke it and said, this bread is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat, and each time you do, remember me. Let's receive the bread. In the same way, after the meal, Jesus took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take, drink, and each time you do, remember me. Let's receive the cup. We're told that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns, and that's the good news. Jesus is coming soon. If you've been blessed by our online services and would like to support the ministries and missions efforts of Radiant Life Church, you can visit our website at radiantlifelodi.com and click the donate link at the top of the homepage. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord through your generosity. Mm -hmm.